You know, I was kind of hoping to be done talking about Storytime Animators. I mean, with that whole Wolfie Chew and Speechy stuff I covered in a while ago, it was like getting beaten over the head with a metal bat. So naturally, when I saw this pop up on my Twitter and Discord, you can imagine my excitement about this prospect. And who wouldn't be excited with an opening like this? Hey guys, Foster here. So, a formal trigger warning is in place. If you are self-righteous and a social justice warrior, you have been warned. I'm going to be talking about LGBT plus subjects. If I make a joke, it's intended to be a joke, this sound will play. <laughs> So I suppose that's another two labels you can throw onto the list of things that people can call me simply because I disagree with this video. And hey, apparently he'd love to see me try and make a video about this. Shut up, fool. Stop your jibber-jabber. The T-Man is here. Well, who am I to disappoint? Other than my parents are taking a career out of this mess of a platform. Careful what you wish for, Foster. You might just get it. So, who is this... Oddly drawn person? Well, this is Foster, a YouTube reviewer who's been on my radar a few times. Mostly because he talked about Wolfie Chew and Speechy. And this video is about Catzoon. Uh... Hold my tentacles. Wait, what? Sub Skullet, what's the goosh? Oh, just me killing my non existent liver at this video. Welcome to hell, Ponder! Nah, man, Helen's doing a few videos on Weebians getting roped into their world and losing all hope to the point where you just embrace the stupid. Which is why I'm here. I smell dumb. Well, you're not wrong. Just off-brand dumb. Ooh, diet dumb. Gotta keep an eye on our figures. Especially you. Yeah, I gotta start watching those calories on my spine. Now, even before we begin, I should point out that apparently there's gonna be a part two with Foster's video, where apparently all his claims are true! And if by some miracle he gets it out before I get this video out, that won't change my points, since this is something that you should have done before you posted your original video, Foster! I'll be looking forward to it regardless, but it's probably not for entirely wholesome reasons. Oh my... Hey guys, Foster here. So, a formal trigger warning is in place. If you are self-righteous and a social justice warrior, you have been warned. Especially if you're self-righteous to the point of thinking you justified it, demanding that an 18-year-old should extend a hand of support to their young, impressionable fans, even if in them being an 18-year-old, they're probably not mature or worldwise enough to do so. Oh, but that's a very specific thing and couldn't possibly happen in this video. Psst, Ponder, you're spoiling the video. Lock me up, Bone Daddy. Oh, this is gonna be fun and bad in so many ways! Ugh. I'm going to be talking about LGBT plus subjects. If I make a joke, it's intended to be a joke, this sound will play. <laughs> yeah, he gives up on this about halfway through, don't even worry about it. I get that jokes can sometimes get lost in translation, and I'll explain more later in the video, but as Ponder said, why would you give it up halfway through? Get committed, man! Buy that lame joke some dinner! Get a ring for crying out loud! Don't be such a tease! And if it isn't intended to be a joke, it won't be there. Katsune has some enormous fallacies in herself and her content that are just... Ugh. I don't like how she's been acting, or the false sense of insecurity that she gives people, but I will address it. The... The false sense of insecurity she gives people. Wait, if the sense of insecurity is false, then isn't, in truth, she providing a sense of security? What? But Panda, it's hard to do retakes, or check your video before you upload it, or know what words mean. How old is Foster? I want to make jokes, but I might feel bad based on how old he is. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> this is gonna be a long one, folks. This video is 15 minutes. If you think that's long, don't go to my channel. So strap in and let's get straight into my... <laughs> oh my god! So one thing that I'll say right off the bat, Tumblr. <laughs> And not the good kind. And not the good kind? What the hell does that mean? Have you not seen the majesty of Bowsette? Am I still hip with the kids? He's talking about the porn. Oh! I get it. 
I don't get it! You have pastels and furries along with LGBT behavior. She has a lot of story times that I would put under the unoriginal category, such as weird things I did as a kid, artist problems, and anxiety. Now, I will show you the common tropes of an animated storyteller. Number one. They're introverted. Number two. They have some sort of mental disorder, such as anxiety. Number three. They don't animate. Number four. They have a child audience. And number five. They are addicted to Hamilton. <laughs> now, if any of these apply to you, then congratulations. You can make it big as an animated storyteller, like, like really big. Like, wow. Oh yeah, and number six. Collaborate with the marshmallow known as James. <laughs> right. So, I played that in full, so let's break down this list of tropes. One, they are introverted. Hmm, where have I heard that- oh. Awkward personalities. Honestly, this is a good criticism. All these channels seem to have the same awkward, look at me, I'm an introvert personality on their channels. And as much as they can claim to be introverted, it seems kind of disingenuous when a lot of them like to yell on their videos and scream about how introverted they are. Oh yeah, what was that about originality? Doesn't help that you don't have any actual clips to back up that Katsune actually falls under that category. Now, I may be ignorant since I don't watch her, which is really awkward since I know she's subbed to me and there's a small possibility that she'll see this video. Oh, she subbed to me too! Hi, Katsune! But that's beside the point. You're not providing any evidence that she actually falls into these categories of tropes that you're providing. You're just expecting people to listen and believe. Which, you know, is kind of ironic. Not to mention, there's a pretty easy to see reason why most storytime animators are introverted. For one thing, plenty of artists are introverted, and storytime animators are artists. Duh. Secondly, the internet is a perfect place for introverted people to really get what's on their mind out there, meaning that they're going to congregate in communities focused both on their art and their want to voice anecdotes or opinions. Being introverted isn't bad, and yeah, when you have a bunch of people who get into a community for similar reasons, chances are they're going to share in the personality traits that drove them there. It could also be the reason why they do collabs with each other, having people who hold similar personality traits and can relate to one another. Yeah, it's a lot easier to work with someone when they understand why you might get mentally exhausted from talking to people too long. It's a mutual, I totally get you bro sort of deal. It's probably why Common and I can work together. He's made of bones, I want to get boned. Careful Ponder, if my girlfriend actually watches this, she'll tan my bones. Two, they have some sort of mental disorder, such as anxiety. Oh. Okay! Wow. This really just goes back to the community of like-minded people thing. Three, they don't animate. I swear, if this is gonna be like the whole Wolfie Chew thing where she does animate, but she doesn't animate enough, then I'm gonna- Clearly it makes more sense to spend months animating an entire video rather than cut a few corners and therefore be able to live off of your passion on YouTube, a platform that has fucked animators over with the algorithm. I'm not petty about it, I swear. I mean, sure, maybe you can get finicky about the title of the community, but does it really matter in the long run? Not to mention, if we think about it, the higher members of the community have full-on teams that help them animate. Possibly when smaller members get the clout and funding, they too can afford more time, help, and resources to animate better. It can be a tiring process. YouTube! A growth process! Four. They have a child audience. That's amazing that you can perceive what a person's audience is! And no, just because someone can assume what a person's audience is, that doesn't mean that it is their audience. I mean, do you have access to her stats? Even if you could prove that the audience was children, what exactly does that mean? Children are the main audience population on YouTube. Children have the most free time to spend online, and they can be the most active with regards to defending channels and personalities they love. Plus, as people grow up, they veer into new forms of content, leaving room for a new generation, which would also be a bunch of kids. Why is this touted against people as though it were a bad thing? Is the implication that because they have a child audience, that means they don't have to try to be innovative with their content? Because stupid kids will like it anyway? I think it's so people can be the moral 
moral police. You know, think of the children! Because if you're making something for kids, then you can be demonized a lot easier. Then that's even dumber. Unless the content creator is explicitly making things for kids to see, they're not at fault for the audience their content garners. See, but I actually went into Kat Zoon's videos, and she does, in one of them, say that her content is for children. Unless you want to argue that her content isn't suitable for children, what exactly are you even trying to prove? Number five, collaborate with Marshmallow known as James. I don't even know if that's a joke. Since later on, you actually talk about how her collaborating with other animators is why she got big in the first place. How dare you take advantage of the resources or friends at your disposal to help your content grow? Kind of like you, Foster, since you, you know, wanted to use James as a resource and do a collab with him and got shot down. Hell, James even infers in here that you got so pissy about that fact that you had to start badmouthing and attacking him. Knowing that kind of just sounds like you're jealous that someone else got a collab with James and you didn't. Poor form, fool. Poor form. So, what's the problem with this list of tropes? Well, considering the last two are... jokes... He can play it off as a joke all he wants. I still think he's mad he didn't get that collab. Most of the tropes here are aspects that people can't control. Personality aspects, i.e. introverts and extroverts. While there is research in recent times stating that personalities can change over time, it isn't something you can automatically change overnight. Now, if you can prove that said personality is an act, then you'd have a point, but that's on you to prove. Mental illness? Yeah, that one should be self-explanatory, but just in case there's some smart aleck in the comments, it should be obvious that having the ability to control mental illnesses isn't possible, despite there being actions to deal with such mental illnesses like medication and therapy. And that's not touching the fact that there are various ways to get mental illnesses, such as inheriting them from birth, brain chemistry, and environmental exposures, for example. And a lot of these are out of control of people. They have a child audience. Hey, congrats, man! You are the winner! It's great that people can choose their audience. That's why I have an audience of over 32k gorillas who are constantly watching my videos. And if that sarcasm flew over your head, I'll say it point blank. You do not choose your audience! Actually, if you really look at it, Foster's not actually offering up any critique here. He's just listing off some pretty common complaints about the community that she's a part of. He hasn't even taken the steps to try and prove that these are traits Katsune shares in. He just states that it's a thing and moves on, doesn't say anything about it. In this sense, this is just relying on your audience already thinking that these are bad things. If she does do these things, then it's up to Foster to provide clips of other storytime animators saying these traits, providing examples. Heck, you could have pointed to Katsune's video where she does say that she's an introvert to prove your point, but nope! I gotta do the work for ya! Moral of the story, kids, only tell, never show. Why would you show? Stop showing me that! This is why YouTube censors the titties. Always telling, never showing. What a gif! Tis a crime of the highest magnitude! If you look at her channel off the bat, it seems to showcase her most popular videos first. Gee, it's not like that's how YouTube is designed to show the most popular videos when you have popular uploads. Just because lots of people like these videos, as evidenced by the likes and view count, doesn't mean I'm going to like it. How dare you advertise this trash to me! which happen to be with Wolfie Chu, Sugar, and The Odd Ones Out. So, hold on a minute. Was your joke about The Odd Ones Out an actual point? It was just a joke. Why would you even bring this up? It's giving a bit of a conflicting signal here, dude. They collaborate with the marshmallow known as James. I mean, fuck guy, clearly the collaboration worked. Why is this such a crime? Oh right, because you didn't get to do it. Common, it took us way too long to collab together, so I'm just gonna go badmouth you in Discord for a bit, okay? Okay. Oh god, the high school girl PSTD is happening again. Hey Foster, why not say that you're trans, then no one will contest you on your LGBT views. I mean, you act enough like a high school girl, just say you are one. And here come the little the Orchard flashbacks. Along with a video about everyone's favorite topic, school. <laughs> and she also has a video about being gay, but that's for later because it's the biggest tragedy. <laughs> but to continue, let's compare her older videos to her newer content. Let's go on and talk about Cool Dance, Nevi Caspadani G, I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking legs. Katsune hasn't changed at all over time. Maybe she made changes in her line art quality. She just went from a smooth line art style to a more boxy one. Uh.
No, she didn't. That line art quality is the same. The art style changed to a more boxy style, but the line art stayed the same. The only difference in the quality of the line art that I can see is that it tapers off in certain places. Then again, there will be more differences since later we actually do get reference to Katsune wanting to change her style from her older channel. Heck, she actually asked her Twitter followers about different styles. And Foster actually pointed to the video that proves that. But didn't show any of that. Yay. God, I love when people try to talk smack about something only to show that they don't actually know what they're talking about. It's my favorite. Personally, I love it when people revive their own demise in their videos. Oh snap, people being stupid is the resource I use to make content that people like. I think by Foster's logic, that means I'm a garbage human being. Not really surprising there. Everyone's trash, hooray! Her storytelling animations have remained a constant overall. Yeah, for about a year. Seriously, if you did a little research, the first video on her channel, at least this current one, is from July 18th, 2017, just over a year ago. Psst, you've been doing storytime videos for a year and you're not already sick of it and moving on to something else? You plebeian! And you'll go on to mention it, but her bees video shows her art style and heck, in it, you show her older style. And it even shows that she was doing a different art style in her previous channel. Okay, before I start this video, I would like to address something. I think we should have my dog as president. Also, I changed my animation style. So over on Twitter, I had a poll between my old style and another style for future animation videos. 70% of y'all voted for the new style, so I ran another poll asking if I should use this style for animating. Long story short, 93% of y'all said yes. I drew my new icon in this style and y'all overwhelmingly loved it, and I spent over 3 hours animating 140 keyframes in this style. And if you were one of the 7% who didn't want me to change styles, then... I'm sorry. And let's compare it to one of her more recent animations, like the introvert video. Every time I hear discussions about introverts and extroverts, I usually hear people talking about how much they hate people and are afraid of talking. Or maybe it's because all the introverts are talking about it on the internet and the extroverts are actually out there... extroverting? Even from that, there's been a difference in quality between then and now, with the subtle movements of the characters. Not to mention the actual quality of the drawings. Such as her quote-unquote first video called Short Problems. But in a later video, she talks about some videos from her channel that have since been deleted. I think either they were deleted or she had a second channel. One of which she re-uploaded titled Bees, being just a story time about bees in general. But her older animations, which aren't really animations. My word, Foster, you're allergic to actually showing footage that can prove your points? Can we just appreciate that in the bees animation, there actually is a line art quality difference in Katsun's art. In particular, the line art is less refined, sometimes the thickness changes, and they're overall a lot shakier than the modern day equivalent. So what you're saying is, Foster cut context? No, I think he's just an idiot who didn't recognize the difference between art style changes and line art changes, and his complaint just happened to coincide with Kat's earlier work, which isn't really surprising because nobody starts off being phenomenal at line art. It's like saying I used to be bad at anatomy and using an example from months earlier and simply showcases the same problems I currently have instead of showing actual developmental differences in the work. I don't know, what's worse then? Are very easily compared to her newer animations. If I showed you this clip. We had to put our dog down recently. Wow, cat, way to start this video off on a happy note. And this clip. Everyone gets a little bit anxious sometimes. Whether it be meeting someone new or ordering a meal, people in general can get nervous. Which one would you think is new? Neither, because guess what, genius? Looking at her more recent videos, her avatar and those videos you showed are in a different style. What's worse is you actually showed earlier in your video her newer style, so you're clearly cherry-picking and using older examples of her work. Congratulations, Foster, you are attempting to poison the well and you are doing a terrible job at it. God damn it, my octopodes were swimming in there! No. Actually, let's look at those two clips more in depth. The first one is from her Why Dogs Are Amazing video, which was from December of 2017, and the other is from her anxiety video, which was from August of 2017. So in five months, Foster's expecting so much growth as an artist that you can see it, in particular him, so untrained that he apparently mixed up line art quality with art style quality, expected to be able to see Katsun's development in five months when she was drawing in a particular style, likely to make animating a faster and more streamlined process. Even if Katsun was improving her art skills 
behind the scenes, the fact that she is using a set style for her animations would actually hide that improvement, unless she specifically decided to apply it to her work, which she did, and that's why her style has changed in recent videos. You know, those videos you didn't bother to look at to see the improvement you're bitching about. Leave your comments down below. <laughs> oh, I already did. And <laughs> man, your comment section is entertaining to say the least. I could really say that Kadzun isn't great at making content either, because it is at the same caliber as some of the other big wigs of animation, such as Jaden Animation and Sugar. I know I use Sugar twice as a, an example. Don't judge me. Uh, or else I'll be making a coming out video. <laughs> Too bad. I am judging you because guess what? No examples? So I'm just supposed to take your word? Wow. No. You can't say that she's good at what she does because it's the same level of quality as the people who are popular precisely because people think they're good at what they do. But then she's also to the standards of the people who made Jaden and Sugar popular and Oh, good lord, my brain. I love her art style. It's quite unique. The colors fit well together for being pastel. What? It's not pastel! The hell? But don't draw a cat with humongous bazongo. <laughs> because then people will think that you're a furry. <laughs> but this whole joke thing you've got going on is probably just defense. Why? Because if they were jokes, you wouldn't have the need to have this annoying aspect here. Jokes tend to be outlandish, jokes tend to be funny, and while that is subjective, you can really make any joke work depending on the tone and its delivery. The fact you're not willing to break away from this monotone way of speaking and have to rely on unfunny laugh tracks is a telltale sign of this. It's especially noted since you got on to people for possibly taking your jokes seriously in the opening, but if they do, they wouldn't be on them 100% of the time. It takes two to tangle, and if you're not bothering to change how you speak, your tone, or even put funny imagery on the screen to go along with what you're saying, then your ability to comedy is one at fault, since you give no indication of it being a joke. Oh, but common. That's why he has the laugh track and joke on the screen. Listen, nerd, if you have to tell people that something is a joke so often, then you're butchering the word. And the fact that Foster had to rely on the same soundbite in effect throughout the entire video thus far will continue to show how in depth to a comedy he is at. This is just the equivalent of a lot of sitcoms. If you take out the laugh track, is it still funny? If the answer is no, then maybe you need to rework how you tell a joke. Assuming the whole quote-unquote joke thing isn't just a cover so people don't get on your arse. LOL, it was a joke, guys! It even says it right there! Why are you getting upset? <laughs> <laughs> What happens whenever you collab frequently with people who are significantly more popular than you? You become popular off of them from using them in your title, tags, and thumbnail. Then what the hell are you doing? Let's see, Speechy, Wolfie Chew, Katsune, Something Else YT, Jane Animations, The Odd Ones Out... Hmm, you're using their names in the titles, and you've got them in the thumbnail, and you're more than likely got them in the tags. They're on the fact that you've got things like Wolfie Chew Traced, is Speechy a tracer? The odd one's out. The worst animator. And this video, Katsune is a liar! Gee, seems like someone's projecting. Oh, good lord. I, I can't even take you seriously. It would almost be kind of cute if it wasn't so... dumb. I mean, to be honest, I don't think there's anything wrong with this practice. I mean, I do it myself, and a ton of other YouTubers do as well. But that raises the question, why is this a bad thing? Especially if the video actually does feature the other party as an active participant in the content. It's like you're mad at them for getting to collab with one another, wherein you're simply left to pick up the scraps by shouting controversial things about them into a crowd. Ah, uh, but Foster would never do that. Just abuse them for all the money and views that you can get off of artificially inflated mediocre garbage content. <laughs> hey, that was actually funny. In an ironic sense. Ugh r slash whoosh. That wasn't a joke, editor. Wait, I'm my own editor. Well, congratulations. You have now tainted your joke defense from this point on. So this was supposed to be a serious point? This, along with you bringing up her collabs with others earlier, is really murking the waters, man. But to use them to popularize yourself makes yourself seem like you're only building your channel off of the people that bring attention to your channel. Not really. If we looked on her channel, she was able to get 100k subs on her own, with two of her videos making it past the million view count before she collaborated with other YouTubers. And heck, most of her animated story times managed to reach or get past her sub count, which can mean that her audience isn't just there for the collabs. 
She didn't build her channel solely on collaborations. Even if she did, that's still not really a bad thing. She's just using the resources she can to expose her content to as many people as possible. It's only in liking her work that they would actually subscribe and continue to watch it. Right, because if that were the case, I'd be having the same sub count as Jar and oh, now I feel sad. Oh, it's okay, Babu. You're still big to me. My girlfriend is seriously going to kill me for this. Again! However, when you're only known as that one person who collabs with big YouTubers, you get used to get others subs, and the cycle repeats. Seriously, at this point you're just parroting what Staxolotl said about Tim Tom. Katsun has only collaborated with four people, and the audience retention seems to be there on her channel if you look at her sub count and view count. It's actually pretty consistent, and shame on you for making me having to repeat myself. If the cycle repeats when you use bigger YouTubers to get you subs, does that mean we're using Foster to get us subs? Well, that all depends if YouTube is actually working on a good day. Like, Jesus, Foster, you want to talk about mooching off of others? What have we got here? Wolfie 2 Traced, The Odd One's Out, The Worst Animator, Is Something Else YT Bad? Fox Goodman Exposed, you actually do exposed videos, strangle me. Ooh, does that mean we'd get Ghost Ponder? Excuse you, I would be Ponder Spectre. Where it will feed back and feed and feed until it becomes so saturated and overdone that it will explode whenever it goes past the breaking point. I think that's just called the next online creator generation. It's happened before. Like, if you seriously think this is the start of YouTube animators not knowing how to do their title, boy, let me introduce you to 2007. Nobody could animate and everybody had a fanime. Now, I don't hate this ideology. I don't think you should have one voice line and then spam them in the title and tags. I've been seeing this in Katsune's videos. Sorry for the tangent, but... Let me get back on topic. Oh no! Katsun used the odd ones out in the video in which she collabed with him in. And she only used it once in the tags. Is that what you consider to be spam? Foster, what the hell are you going on about? You can use words like ideology all you want, but spam is something you don't know the definition of? If Katsun put the odd ones out in all her video tags, then fine, you'd have a point. But your example here is weak since the tag for this video is justified, and it's not even being spammed. Also, way to show you didn't even watch the damn video, since the odd ones out was the white wolf in the video, and it was speaking multiple times. Uh, you look really pretty today. Ah, oh, you're so funny, haha, <laughs> friend! He was the only other voiced character in the entire video, what the hell are you going on about? So Katsune's got a lot of her popularity off of appealing to children along with collaborating with others. Four videos where she's collaborated, and most of her content has done well without it. Also, proof that she does appeal to children? I mean, you're the one claiming that she does, Foster. Shouldn't be that hard to prove. I mean, Katsun basically is a child and started on YouTube as a child, so I don't see the problem with a child making content that appeals to other children. Actually, I went and looked over Katsun's videos and arguably, I would say that her earlier videos, whether it be in topic or title, would probably appeal more to children than her current content. A lot of her more recent stuff seems as though it would appeal more broadly to our artists or just people who share in similar interests as her. It's not like she's making a fucking slime video or those squeezy ball things. Orbeez? I don't know. How else did she gather fans, you may ask yourself? Well, she's a gay figure. For young children. You can see this uh, in the fan art that's made for her. Which is kind of the fan art that makes Katsune want to off herself. I'm assuming that's her avatar in their birthday suit. And that doesn't prove that she's a gay figure, because shock of all shocks, people draw nude works of other characters of all the time. Yeah, I'm right here. Heck, I've had some more suggestive works done on my avatars in the past by people who did fan art. Same! This is a dumb point and doesn't prove what you're claiming. What especially goes against your claim is that Katsun doesn't really make it known in all of her videos regarding her sexuality. Not as far as I can tell, at least. And, you know, I went to watch her videos just to make sure. Hell, her coming out video was, as of scripting this, the most recent video on her channel. You're kind of just saying, she's gay, so therefore kids love her, without really substantiating why that would even be the case. Is it cool to be gay now? Now? I mean, hey, works for me. Video that's misinformative and just awful, that's whenever you really mess up. And Kadzun has messed up a whole lot. We will address that in this section that I would like to call... Kadzun has a few controversies surrounding her. 
I researched this and talked to multiple people. I am sorry that I have minimal evidence to support most of this, because since most of this is word of mouth. Then why are you talking about it? My word, you do know that using the he said, she said stuff is the worst way to go about this, right? Testimony is actually one of the weakest forms of evidence to use. And even then, if you're about to pull a pentagram, so help me! Now I'm the one getting flashbacks. Then again, you said you were Megan a part two, so why didn't you bother to do the legwork for this video? Why didn't you get into contact with the supposedly huge group of people in Discord before you made this wishy-washy video? Because that would be hard. And probably because he had to make the claim first so that all the people with confirmation bias could come out of the woodwork with, Oh, I have evidence! I have evidence! Completely fooling themselves into thinking the minor squabbles or complaints they have actually warrant real outrage from anyone other than themselves. Trust me, I got so much of that crap after the whole Spockter drama situation. You'd be surprised what sort of trivial bullshit people can trick themselves into thinking is significant enough to justify their dislike of a person. Like denying a collab! So, I could very well be wrong in some of these assumptions. To be clear, not all of this is 100% concrete fact. In the video, not all of this is 100% concrete fact. You know, despite you going on to pretend like it is. In the comment section, all of my claims are true. On Discord, the claims I made were almost 100% correct. Somebody can't keep his claims straight. Heck, you even flat out call these assumptions. You also can't say that something you admit yourself to being word of mouth is 100% fact, especially when you don't have any evidence to prove as much. And it's really apparent that in making this video you didn't have said proof because otherwise you would have used it. Word of mouth and anecdotes change from person to person as well as over time. So for all we know, you're just listening to someone spouting one side of a skewed story. Why should we believe anything you have to say when you can't even provide the evidence that convinced you. Is it confirmation bias? I'm gonna guess it's confirmation bias. And even then, therein lies the possibility of any evidence you do show in your second video would just show up out of thin air because of this. Weird how when you started saying that you have evidence that you can prove your claims came up after I made my comment about your video sucking. Who wants to bet he's going to have cropped out of context screenshots? I'm taking bets now. I would like to start off with a controversial video, the coming out video. Katsun is not the best at giving hope to whom are in the closet. Talking about her own coming out story experience without giving people who struggle with this any help. Be right back. Gonna go watch the video. I want to kill everyone. Except, you know, telling them that it's okay to come out and giving people her own experiences so they can learn from her mistakes and life experience. You know giving help through example. That's the thing, too. At the end of the video, after talking about her own story to use as a building ground, Katsun does try to help in assuring those watching that it's not wrong or sinful to be gay. She specifies that even if some people don't agree with you, specifically from her video, she says, there are going to be people who tell you you're evil, that you're going to hell for something that you can't control. They're wrong. She is helping. She's explaining where she came from, how she was also raised in that mindset, that she learned to grow past it, and it has better her in so many ways. How the fuck is that not helpful to other LGBT youth seeking to come out? Even if she doesn't flat out say some things, it's very easy to learn from how she describes her own experiences, especially when she makes note of the girl who helped her come out to her friends and family, showcasing that it's good to have someone who can help you and support you in coming out. Even beyond that, why should she seek to help others in that video? The video was about her her coming out. It was about her experiences and how she learned and grew from it. I would argue that storytime videos are very good for presenting a life experience that other people can learn from simply by hearing about the experience itself, so why is she there and expected to expand on something that is unique to her? Especially when she doesn't know the situations of all those watching and wouldn't know how to apply what she's learned to each of them individually. Why should she try to explain something to the one idiot in the group who can't look at that situation and learn how to apply the morals of it to their own life? Let me summarize it. First off, Katzoon talks about how there's always something forbidden about being gay. There is always something forbidden about being gay. Maybe it's because it's considered the other sexuality, or maybe because it's considered a sin by some. Either way, it was always this taboo subject that you just can't be. 
Newsflash, Katzoon, this isn't Salem in the 1700s. Did you just pull current year on me? And no, she's not doing that. It's literally a dramatic opening for a subject that she explains why it was forbidden to her. Yeah, because her being raised in a Catholic school that was against gays totally isn't her being taught that very fucking thing in modern society. Like, did you just completely overlook that? You are falsifying the fact that being gay has its forbidden sides in modern society. Sure, it may have been forbidden in the past, where being gay is widely accepted. And you are 18 and talk about how there is some stuff forbidden about being gay. You honestly have no idea. And your evidence for this is... NOTHING! Meanwhile, during a simple Google search, you'll find stories like this. Where a gay teen was kicked out of his home in 2018. Or how about this young LGBT member that was kicked from her home in 2016 because she was, well, gay. Her folks even changed the locks on their doors to keep her out. Plus, plenty of states in the good old US of A are still trying to work around the same-sex marriage laws and have it either banned or not legally recognized. There's also this fucker who straight up physically attacked two men for being gay. Now, obviously, we can't say that these stories are fact 100%. In fact, you could probably find some inconsistencies if you look hard enough. But the point is, Foster didn't do a simple Google search to see if any stories like this existed in the modern day. He just assumes that gay people have no problems in the current year based on, I don't know, the smell of his own farts, I guess? I mean, he does give a reason, but I'll explain why that's trash next. Oh, but don't forget, Foster is also using Katsun's age as a reason why she doesn't understand what she's talking about. He's implying that she doesn't have the life experience to talk about this. Keep that in mind, folks, because he's going to be an idiot in about a minute and completely go back on that just so he can ride the moral high horse. In a car trip, me and my mom talked about my distant grandpa, who was gay in the 1940s. Now, I'll let you think. He had to get beat, he got bullied, and threatened to be killed every day. But in the late 2010s, people can hardly be treated like that. Maybe a minimal use of derogatory terms, but I don't want to hear it, Katsune. Anecdotal! Right, so Foster's evidence for why he believes gay people don't face any strife is a story that he can't prove to be true. For those who are unaware when making an argument, using anecdotes is a bad idea. They can neither be proven or disproven to be true. Save your questions for the end of the video, I still got more to say. Anyone can make it an experience to support their argument. And even if the anecdote is true, that doesn't mean it'll hold true for anyone other than the person making said anecdote. This makes it especially bad as it'll affect the audience, making it harder for them to discern facts and feelings. For example, I would like to share the story of my friend McShamus. And no, it's not racist, he's Irish. McShamus said that Mega Man 11 had multiple bugs in the game to the point where he would die because of them, and that it was an attempt to cash in on the franchise of Mega Man. McShamus also claimed that he was attacked by a Mega Man cosplayer when he was a kid with a garden hose, and that's why he hates the franchise. And there you go! Obviously, the story I made up is not true at all. But when you start to use anecdotal evidence like this to berate someone, and then you said anecdotal evidence to say such sweeping generalizations without doing a lick of research, well, that doesn't make you look good, if I can put that nicely. Jeez, and I thought I liked my tangents. But are we seriously supposed to look at this and think that this is a good argument? Even discounting it being anecdotal and trying to use that to prove Katsun wrong, Foster is effectively saying, gay people had it harder in the past, therefore, Katsun can't have it hard now. No, you moron, that's not how that works. Everyone's situation is different. Individual people are different. What some people are okay with and will support their children through, others would shame their child for the very same thing. Heck, I didn't go to a Catholic school, but I had someone who, when I let it slip that I liked a girl in my class, shamed me for it. And I live in Canada. This isn't how you try to prove someone wrong. This isn't even how you go about suggesting it. Don't get all self-righteous. Look. Who's talking? Second off, Katsune talks about sex ed, where they were told that being gay is a sin. And though religion itself isn't inherently toxic, this school was. I remember one of the first times I heard gay was forbidden was in fifth grade when we had sex ed. We had an entire chapter dedicated to how wrong homosexuality was, and how it was a horrible sin that'll send you straight to hell. Except, I looked, and in recent years, when Katz probably did learn about sex ed, Many schools were rejecting the use of sexual education. Which you do not provide. Again, you're delving into anecdotes and pulling a game theory here. Welcome to shame theory! You do have sources, but two of those are about disease and the other three are about videos from Katsun. Foster, that's not how this works! Plus, one of his sources kind of flies in the face of something he tries to prove later on. I can easily make up a story or a source that says the opposite. 
Or I could bring in my own past of actually being raised in a Catholic school and talk about my own personal experiences. But I won't hear since that I'll be anecdotal. And how recent are these recent years that you're supposed to be talking about? Katsune is apparently 18 in 2018. She said that she learned about this in sex ed when she was in grade 5. So that's around 2011 when she was, well, 11. Even if you want to continue down the route you're already going, you have to take into consideration different schools, districts, textbooks, and learning curriculums. You don't know what school Katsune went to, you don't know what textbooks they used, you don't know what the curriculum was, you simply make a broad generalization that might not even apply to the time period relevant to Kat's own story. You barely even take into consideration the fact that she was raised in a Catholic school. How the hell do you come across this argument and honestly think it would fly? Especially in religious schools such as hers. Wow, that's a... Uh... That's amazing, Foster. You know where Katsune went to school? And you know their policies? That's amazing! Not- I literally just had to Google Catholic school sex education curriculum to get an idea of what some schools do regarding sex ed. Now, granted, I live in Toronto and my results were skewed to match where I live. But this really just shows how easy it is to even check whether or not Catholic schools teach sex ed. It's not- it's not difficult. Foster instead heard some schools are rejecting sex ed and decided to arbitrarily place that onto Catholic at school, a school he doesn't know anything about, mind you, just so that his assumptions about Cat could hold some sort of weight to them. Since Foster has said that there's going to be a part two, I would love to see him weasel out of that blatant assumption. Prove me wrong. Find Katsun's elementary Catholic school. Find her 2011 curriculum. Show that they didn't teach sex ed. Find the textbook and show that the chapter on homosexuality being a sin doesn't exist. Prove me wrong. Or better yet, prove yourself right. That thing that you should have been doing from the start. Another thing have you ever actually bothered to leave your safe space? Because you don't seem to understand the current society that we live in, cats. Oh, the irony. Her safe space. The one she was living in before when her Catholic school taught her that homosexuality was a sin? Do you even hear yourself? But Panda, obviously that would violate his own safe space. Logic is my trigger word! Cats is stuck in the Hamilton era. <laughs> because I guess gay is against the law, and it's against the Bible, and you'll go to hell for loving Jessica Rabbit. You know, this might be a slight tangent, but just because something is against the law, that doesn't mean people won't do things that are against it. Like, take for in Kentucky, for example, in London, it's illegal to have sex on a motorcycle. That's hot. In some places, you can't hunt fish with a bow and arrow. A just law, to be sure. Sea creatures are naturally afraid of archers. You can hunt whale from your car. And if you're in Kentucky, if you're a woman, you can't be in a bikini near the highway unless you're accompanied by at least two police officers. That's how I like to spend my Friday nights. Point is, just because it's against the law, that doesn't mean people don't do it. We even showed examples earlier of this happening to gay people that they were actually being abused, despite it being against the law. Also, why are you speaking with such condemnation against the notion of gays going to hell? I mean, I agree with you, but you're acting like it's such a stupid thing for Katsun to have believed this growing up. She was in grade five. She thought that being gay was a sin. She was raised to believe as much. People much older than her still think this, and even nowadays people are being raised to think the very same thing. If you don't actually think that religious sections are still preaching that homosexuality is a sin, leave your fucking house once in a while. You act like it's so ridiculous for a child to believe this stuff, but it's really not. Children believe what they're told, and they don't have the wherewithal or world experience to recognize when something might not be up to snuff. Guaranteed, you believe some stupid shit when you were a kid. How old are you? Maybe I can include thinking these were sound arguments on that list. I mean, I know I said I would go anecdotal myself, but having been taught in a Catholic school, they do try to hammer in the beliefs into you. Heck, I remember going to Wednesday and Friday morning mass every week for an hour. Again, this is anecdotal and based on my own experiences, but the argument we've made is strong enough to, with or without it. Third off, Katsune doesn't make any attempt at helping people who struggle with coming out get out of their own little space. Oh my, Arceus, are you serious? Providing stories on how she struggled and how liberating it felt to get out of that mindset is a form of helping people! Wait for it. If you do overcome it, wonderful! I'm glad that you were brave enough to do it. But it's 2018, so I doubt that you'll be burned at the stake or abandoned by your parents. 
everyone should be able to accept themselves for who they are. And through this video, and through her influence with the LGBT community, and through her popularity and influence on YouTube, she does nothing to even attempt to help people who struggle. I think this record is broken and it keeps repeating the same stupid point again and again. Offering no helpline and no real moral support to help others throughout the video. Sure, she did mention it a bit at the end. Way to shoot yourself in the foot, Foster! Thanks for wasting everyone's time! Enjoy your tinfoil fedora and whole foot! But it doesn't help whenever you don't directly want to help people. Way to assume intent! Years of guilt were lifted and I've never felt so happy. I would never have done it without people like Halsey being so open about her sexuality, and I would never have done it without that girl I met who helped me realize who I am. And if I can make just one kid out there feel less alone, then my job is done. It would have helped if you would have told them how to learn from their own experiences, rather than just telling them your own. Foster apparently has never heard of learning through example. Okay, I think I've let him drone on for a long enough amount of time. So, you guys remember when Foster was looking down on Katsun's mere 18 years of life experience and using that as a reason why she couldn't talk on the hardships of LGBT people? Yeah, here, we have him flat out ignoring her age and now demanding that she act as a pillar for the gay community, a role model, and a voice to help others with their struggles. Guy! She is 18 years old! You honestly think that she is mature and versed enough in tough social issues to be able to help everyone who comes to her asking for her help? Really? You tell him, Squid Mama! This isn't even remotely acceptable. You don't just get to shut down her personal experiences and tell her that she doesn't get to talk about her own hardships because gay people in the past had it harder, and then in the same goddamn video effectively berate her for not being a supportive pillar of the community for all the gay babies watching her content. Well, gee, fucko, if gay people in the past had it harder and Therein Cat doesn't have it hard now, I guess none of the kids watching her content have it hard and Therein wouldn't need her to act as a support for them. You stupid fuck. And the dumbest thing yet? Even if she was trying to act as a good support for those who needed her help, something you can't actually prove she doesn't do because she could be doing it behind the scenes and simply not making a big fuss about it, like what any decent human being tries to do, but even if she was doing that, then the argument would be that she's only 18 years old and she's not mature enough to be able to handle these complex situations. Gag me. Funny thing is, if she did make a deal out of it in the video, you'd probably make her out to be glorifying and using it as a defense. Kind of like using charity to say that you're a good person. Man, where was y'all at when I was on the email trying to stop depressed fans from killing themselves? Man, where was y'all at when Make-A-Wish hit me to meet my girl Kaylee? Damn, that shit changed me. I repeat, gag me. Ugh. The sad thing is, this is gonna get even dumber as he brings up another point against her in a few minutes. Oh god, we still have five minutes of this video left. Multiply that by 12 and you'll have the remaining time of the commentary. ba da ba ba da bop I didn't know he had Boon Slayer as a cameo. Next, I would like to bring up her Discord controversy. So as many of you may know, Katsun used to have a Discord server. Keyword, used to. I heard through the grapevine, and through a few more sources, which you do not provide. I found that Katzoon had a dumpster fire of a Discord server. It probably had around, I would estimate between 5,000 and 10,000 members. I know that that's a broad estimate, but still it's a lot of people. You don't know yet! Oh, Arky is that clip again. Foster making broad estimates? Color me shocked. Now, on June 28th this year, Katzoon announced that on her Discord server, Hey, this server in general has been super infant for me. Being on here is chaos for my brain injury and when I'm away everyone gets mad at me and personally attacks me. Imagine having hundreds of thousands of people nitpicking everything you do constantly and on top of it all managing an incredibly rare condition that causes constant migraines. It's not fun. It's not easy. It's very painful. And everyone... What? is quite odd seeing as she had a brain injury since March 4th of this year. March 4th, so about over four months before she made that post. Remember that! I looked at the World Health Organization and Mayo Clinic. Katzun has post-concussion syndrome, where she states, Hi, my name is Kat. Most of y'all know that, but for y'all who don't know that, that is my name. I have post-concussion syndrome. It hurts my head like I get a migraine, and it's uncontrollable. There's nothing I can do to stop it. I looked at the sites, and they say 
with proper treatment that she should have recovered from her symptoms in approximately three months, give or take a few weeks. Wow, I haven't seen this level of ineptitude in ages. Foster, did you even know how to read? I seriously have to question that since on your own screen it says the possibility of them persisting for a year or more exists. Yet you're just assuming, oh, she must have recovered after three months. Don't believe me? Listen! We have January 27th to the end of June, which is almost exactly five months, which is an estimated two months after she should have recovered, which seems unreasonable. But I will say, maybe it's a special case of hers. But that's quite rare, seeing as it's a very high recovery rate. Your own source said they can last for a year or more. My Arceus poster, if you're gonna attempt BS, at least try to give a damn about it. Yeah, and that's even discounting the fact that the screenshot he showed doesn't even specify the whole with proper treatment thing that he claims. It even specifies that the quote unquote treatment is just a means of managing the symptoms, not the damage left over from the concussion itself. Foster is effectively taking the bare minimum for how long post concussion syndrome can last and saying that because Katzen's case is lasting longer than that, it means it must not be true. This is the perfect example of how someone's potential confirmation bias can stop them from fully taking in information that might prove them wrong. The screenshot Foster shows indicates that post-concussion syndrome can last upwards of a year, but that goes against his narrative of Katzen lying about it, so he only addresses the shortest amount of time listed. I got my concussion on January 27th, and today is April 9th. You can do the math on that one. But then you have an excuse for closing her Discord server being that it triggers her migraines. But that simply is not true based on the facts that I've been seeing. None of what you've provided in this video has been fact. Get out. We have January 27th to the end of June, which is almost exactly five months. No, get that seven out of here. End of January to end of June. February, March, April, May, June. That's five. Where the hell did you get seven? Which is an estimated two months after she should have recovered. How do you fuck up this shit in the editing process? Like, I get speaking wrong and fucking it up in the recording, but how in the editing process do you do that? Which seems unreasonable, but I will say maybe it's a special case of hers. But that's quite rare seeing as it's a very high recovery rate. Yeah, but not necessarily in the short amount of time you specified. But she did leave the server. I heard from somebody that she left only one or two people in charge. From what I've heard, that they were forced to shut down the abandoned server, and that it seems to be because she can't take criticism, and controversy is starting to catch up with her. What? That... that doesn't make any sense. You just said that the server was shut down after she left. If she left the server, then how does her potentially receiving criticism, I'm guessing on the server, still affect her. She's not there to receive it. How does that make any sense? Heck, you also said that the server was abandoned. Abandoned by her or by everyone? How is she getting criticism on an abandoned server? And this is from what you've heard? From whom? Who did you talk to who was in the server and knew what was going on? Was it an admin? Was it a mod? Or was it some rando who just happened to think they knew what was going on? Because there's usually a very distinct difference between those factions. Anyways, on to the final controversy that I've been told about, scamming her patrons on Patreon. Now, there isn't a whole lot of evidence to suggest this. Then why the hell are we even listening to you? I could be doing so much more with my life, playing Mega Man 11, seeing how much liquor my liver can take from my snow cones, learning how to crochet a macrame owl. I hear those are actually pretty neat. But she had a Patreon that people donated to. Now it's gone. So I'm not sure what she did with it but I've heard that all the rewards that she was supposed to give out were never given. Which seems like that they should have been done, but I heard that she was using her Patreon to pay off her parents for buying her Cintiq drawing tablet. Now, I don't see a problem with this. However, I do see how she basically scammed her supporters out of their benefits, which is something that I have a humongous problem with. You don't make excuses like, my PCS is acting up, I see that that video is from June 26, around the same time that you deleted your Discord server. You had the Patreon link in your About tab, and the day after that video was made, it was gone. I wonder where it went, but it's gone from there. Also, I'm not sure if she even attempted to reward her supporters. I would be completely insulted if you didn't give them the rewards that they deserve, because that is scam and deceptive practices. Well, apparently this is in the second video, because why should I believe a word you say here? You don't provide anything. This is so... God, it just hurts. Okay, 
Firstly, the price of the tablet, it's about 900 bucks, but with the taxes, we'll be generous and round it up to an even 1k. Why would Katzun need to, in your words, pay her parents back for a thousand dollar tablet when she herself on YouTube, because yeah, her videos are monetized, earns anywhere between 600 to 10,000 dollars monthly. Now granted, these estimates are from Social Blade, so I don't know how reliable they are, but I'll give you something else. My videos are monetized. Granted, it's only like six or seven of them. I get uh, roughly 200-ish a month from the videos I currently have up. I ain't nearly as big as Katsun, nor do I get as much traffic, but based on my earnings versus my views, compared to her views, she probably earns at least 600 a month. At least. So in two months, barring whatever other expenses she might have, she would have enough to pay off this tablet. Plus, Katsun has a merch store. I know this because I had to effectively go through her videos to look for things and she advertises it. So she's clearly making money from that too. So for starters, why would she have to dip into her Patreon funds to pay for a tablet that she would earn enough to pay for on her own anyways? And actually, why would it be bad for her to use Patreon money? Money that is usually given to a creator to help with the creation process. To buy a new tablet? A tablet is a creative tool. Patreon funds are usually intended to support creators and help them upgrade their setup. So why are you talking about this like that act in and of itself is a bad thing? That's usually what Patreon is for. Secondly, you have nothing to show regarding whether or not the reward tiers for Catstone's Patreon was met. As far as we know, you've just been told this by someone. By whom? And did they tell you this and you just believe them outright? Because chances are if you asked them to substantiate their claims, then you'd have evidence you could show us. But you don't. Whoops. This Justin, hear ye, hear ye, Panda Sprocket uses Patreon funds to support her cocaine addiction. I heard it in the graveyard. Zombies would never lie. <sighs> like I said, apparently it's in the second video. <sighs> I want to call my eyes and ears who helped me with this by saying it all started on June 26th of this year. Katsune decides to get Toon Boom to rework her visual art through, I guess, a more human persona. Okay, gonna stop this here since this doesn't prove that this stuff actually happened. I don't know this person. Is he a trusted source? Does he have evidence? Or is he just saying something to prove what you're saying because it's convenient? Even if your second video does come out, Foster, that won't save the dumpster fire of this since if you had the ability to get the evidence beforehand, why wouldn't you show it when you made the claims in this video first? Could it be true? Hell if I know! But you certainly didn't prove it here! Are the people who you're gonna talk to in your next video her patrons? If so, why wouldn't you talk to them for this video instead? Also, I'm just gonna sit back and laugh that in this very screenshot, it's effectively laying the groundwork for why Katsum would choose to leave her Discord after her head injury. The screenshot specifically makes note that the mods weren't great and there were immature people in there. Not exactly out of the realm of possibility for a person with chronic migraine and irritability problems to choose to leave under those conditions. The screenshot doesn't even show anything that you yourself haven't already said and we've already made note of how saying something doesn't make it true. That was the quote from my friend who knows a lot about this situation. Yet yeah, doesn't provide any actual proof of said situation. He just says it happened. I was going to say that maybe your friend should have made this video, as according to you, they know a lot about this situation, but based on that screenshot, I don't exactly have high hopes for their ability to provide adequate evidence either. I mean, I could say I was attacked by garden gnomes, but that doesn't mean it gets true. For all anyone knows, my sexual escapades are a myth, and I'm an overreaching, overcompensating virgin. What reason should we consider what this guy says to be true? Was he a patron of Katsune? You're giving us no reason to trust this guy's word on the matter. Okay, side note, Foster, if I'm tweeting at Katsun to ask her something and you pop up despite not being tagged and not following me? That's kind of creepy. Although, thanks for that because now I know you're 18. I feel disturbance in the stalker force. Gee, Foster, why aren't you a pillar for the gay community? From what I've seen, Katsun seems to be a very bland YouTube storyteller animation person. I would say the same schnikey like, try to stand out from the crowd and pick more original topics, but that's worn out. Katsun, you should either go all in and animate everything that you do, or do nothing and stay with your vlog style videos. Wow, I have never seen such a special snowflake before. You barely even talked about our animation, and you didn't even use recent examples. And people wonder why reviewers are entitled nowadays. 
The fuck does that have to do with anything else in here? First we have bad discord. Then we move on to potential Patreon scam. And now we're just floundering around it. Oh, but totally get better with your art, okay? I think I just got whiplash. I have had enough with this. The controversy that you've created is inexcusable. Oh, so now it's a fact this controversy is real. Way to prove it. SARCASM! She steals people's money. Didn't prove it. Abandons her fans and treats being gay as a capital crime. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell was that? When the hell did she ever say that? Are you sure Katsune is the one with the head injury here? Yes, because she talked about how she was religiously brought up to think that homosexuality is a sin and eventually got over that mentality, but still recognizes that some people think that way. That means she's treating being gay like it's a crime. Sure. Okay. That's how that works. Her content, herself, and everything about her seems flawed. Gee, it's almost like people are flawed and make mistakes. I could say the same thing about you, Foster. What the hell are you going on about? Knowing what I found out about you in trying to script this video... This is just sad. One thing that I will say that it's quite ironic for a, um, pussy to like pussy. Again, I'm guessing that was a joke, but I see you dropped the joke line here. Way to be consistent. Also, that's not irony. Ugh, this was a dumpster fire. From assumptions to not doing research to putting words into Katsune's mouth. If by the chance Foster's second video does come out with Katsune's patrons proving that they didn't get the Patreon rewards, that wouldn't save this fire. Foster had to get up, edit this thing, make the conscious choice to use these points in his our video, Arcus forbid he actually do a little more legwork to actually prove his claims to be true in this video. This was LAZY! And again, even if his second video does prove that his claims to be true, that wouldn't save this video since the problems with it besides those points. He already released it. <laughs> Damn it.